Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jason with Destination Full Time, and today we're going to talk about wiring in these upfitter switches, our auxiliary switches, to control all the stuff that we have on our dash. So you can see we have a dash camera, we have a backup camera, and we have a GPS that we use when traveling, along with my phone that we use for our tire pressure system. All that I've kind of bundled into a a wire harness here and all that feeds down into this mass <laughs> and I'm tired of it I don't want that anymore um, so we're going to wire us in so when we flip this switch it will turn all this on or off we sold our house along with almost everything we owned and we packed up the RV to live a lifestyle on the road now we're free from sticks and bricks in that old life we used to know. Come and join on our adventures, all the places that we'll go. And living in the RV is sublime. Destination, full time. So the first thing we got to do is take this dash, pan this uh, floor panel off. Then we're going to have to take this off, along with this because we're gonna run, we're gonna connect to the pass-through wires down here, run up through here, across, and up into here with our wires. So you're just gonna take this and kind of pry it up as you come along. And that's how easy that is. <clears throat> There's a little panel on the inside here. That you pull off and then this has got to come off now this is a little more difficult because what you have to do is take this weather stripping off to get to it so you just take it and literally just pull it off oh I know that probably makes you nervous but it'd be alright and then this pulls out Now this you might want to get you a little plastic tool to pry on. But if you grab that corner right there you can pop it out. And then you can just work your fingers up. And down. And just pop that out as well. And that's really all there is to it. Our pass-through wires are right here in this bundle. A lot of people get this bundle here confused with the upfitter switches or auxiliary switches. This is not for that. These are your pass-through wires right here. Now, you can see there's a, a white wire, a white orange wire, looks like a white or a gray orange wire, and then a gray white wire so you've got those four wires that they've already ran through the firewall this is your box right here with your relays in it and you can pop that off and see the different relays but you're going to have to remove this so there's a little clip right here and another one right there and that pulls up. Underneath this is a wire bundle right here. We're going to have to tear into that. All right, so the upfitter switches are pre wired. We have to take this tape off to get to them. They're a little stiff. pre-wired in you can see that we have labels if we can get tape off of it we have labels to our relays so you can see relay one five six two three and four 
and these are your wires. So you can see that this wire being gray and orange, which is gray and orange, is relay switch six. This cluster of wires here, there's four. That Ford runs through the firewall. If you can see here, these four coincide to the four that we showed on the inside uh, passenger side floor panel. These are the four wires that are already passed through. So we'll have to get this rubber off of this and then splice these connections together. All right, so we have this one, which is the, as we saw on here, it is green brown, which is relay one. If we go in now and we turn the key on and flip switch one, we get 12 volts on this. We check that with our meter. And so we know that to be the case. Now we've stripped back our wires that feed into the cab. And we need to now connect one of these wires with this wire. And then we'll have 12 volts inside. Now we've got to combine these two wires together. We're going to use this type of connector. We're going to shove that end in. And we're going to twist our wires on this one. And we're going to shove that end in. And we're going to take our crimpers. And we're going to crimp that down. Crimp that down. So we should have a good solid connection. Now this is uh, heat shrink, so we're gonna get our heat gun and melt that in real nice. going to have to do is strip this back and connect it to a wire as well and they don't give you a whole lot to play with here twist my wire now I'm going to wire in I'm going to wire in one of these sockets because I'm really going to use these pre-wired sockets already so this is just going to fit in there plug in and then I'll have some of those in there as well so what I've got to do with this is cut one end off because I don't need that kind of a connector I'm just going to cut that end off and I'm going to strip this wire back as well Twist those wires. My connector. Now you could solder these, but I like these connectors. They're easy to work with. Push that in. Push that in. in. Get your crimpers, crimp down. And we got a good connection there. Find a ground spot to the truck. Get this in. All right, so now we have our wires um, 
we have our wires already wired in, heat shrinked in, and now we're just going to run them up behind the, the console. We routed it up through the firewall here, and we're just running it right up through here, behind this piece, and down into here. Which gets us gets us behind the dashboard here. So we wire these in. Well now we can shove that back up underneath the dashboard. So I want to come across here and end up putting it the wires coming out up here. You just want to take your time and use a plastic tool or a wooden tool to help you pry so you don't mar anything up. Yeah, it looks like there's some clips up underneath here. One more, not letting go. Now the good thing is on a lot of these plastic car parts and stuff, you feel like you might break something, but they're actually pretty durable. Now we're gonna have a couple bolts up here. screws are out. So now it's just going to lift up. Now I'm just going to take and put a little napkin right there because I'm going to have to do a little prying. Just want to get your tool down around the edge. Pop that out. Hold that up. Same thing on this other side. Oh, there we go, we got it out. Now, go ahead and disconnect your speaker here and our tray is out all right so this is a three outlet cigarette lighter adapter the plan is to take this cord fish it down through here and connect it with that tuck it all up underneath and then from here you take these cables that run these devices drill a little hole in this in this tray that we just removed and feed those wires up through there so we can have just a few inches of wire coming out versus lines everywhere that's the idea and then we'll be able to control them with these two switches all right i've successfully fished this up through i'm going to tape these in
that should be just enough to keep that nice and snug do the same thing with this one and that one's taped in too I'm going to leave all this just sit up here that way I can easily get to it if there's ever any issue I'm gonna leave a little slack down here because we're gonna route those wires a little differently eventually and zip tie everything up nice and sm smooth. Um, okay, so this one is here. This one's gonna come into this socket for the dashboard cam. Ideally, if I could fish this down through here, that would be perfect. actually gonna work oh that's perfect look at that wow that actually worked great <laughs> that's pretty clean and that came out really good I like it cool so now again what we want to do is I want to run this back through here into the glove box. Let's uh, not forget to plug in our speaker. All right, speaker's plugged in. I'm just gonna lay that in there for the time being. So we can go ahead and snap this back into place and put these screws back in. snap our speaker cover back in place and we're good as new all right just like on the others we're gonna tape up our dashboard camera as well all right So all this is going to get tucked right into here and then that'll be closed and then if there's ever any issue I can get in there and easily address it. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is clean up all this and then we'll come back and show you what the final product looks like. Alright so we want to 
go ahead and wrap up these bundles. They put a, a waterproof kind of wax rubberish deal on the bottom of these wires, your upfitter switch wires. So you don't have to do anything particular to them. Those are in good shape. I am going to try to tape these off a little bit here just to make it a little cleaner. All right, and then the switch box. There we go. Now we're switched in perfectly all right so we've cleaned up our wires now we've got them zip tied down through here zip tied up underneath the dash uh, cleaned them up in here zip tied them up in here everything works good that closes this opens and closes just fine everything is good so now we're just going to pop these panels back on find them <laughs> all right so this one's gonna go right back in here all good runner weather stripping down the next piece is gonna be this one and it goes remember how it goes it goes this way and this goes to a little piece right there that's solid I'm just going to feed this weather stripping down and you just push it into place. It has a little rail system. And it just pops in. The hardest part is the right at the corners. You can feel it kind of pop in. You can feel the back side. One piece of it's gonna go on either side of the metal. All right. And then this kick plate here. And then the last little fuse box cover, which you can't really see, slides back up in here. Wow, there are no wires. That's crazy. Wow. Now the only thing I've got to figure out is how that little tray fits in there but I could probably just cut that corner off or just leave it like this. It's actually fine just like that. But we might, what we might do is, because we drilled those holes, is just trim this corner off so the wires will go down in there just fine. That's probably what we'll do. Um, but besides that, the truck still cranks. 
So that's a good thing. Um, if I turn on switch one, that should enable my camera, dashboard cam. And if I turn on switch two, I now have my GPS and also my backup camera available to me. And in this particular truck, um, I use, like I mentioned before, I do use my phone, but we'll just simply connect that to our uh, USB cable right here. And we'll have one little wire that feeds right there, which is no big deal at all because it's right there and that's what you need and everything works great. I can see everything, I can control everything and I can turn on and off as I need to. If I flip switch two, that's gonna disable. You can see the battery went off there so it's not charging anymore. So everything is working exactly how it's supposed to. Even though the truck's still running, I can turn off my dashboard camera and it's gonna power off. Living in the RV is sublime. Destination full time